All right, Dr. Boysen, let's go ahead and talk about the urinary bladder site. All right, so this is very simple. When we do our scanning, we come from the subxiphoid to the umbilical and back to the urinary bladder. We make a straight line, and then we get the two uh, lumbar sites at the end. So we're gonna now look at the urinary bladder. This is very simple. We just simply come back to the region of the pelvis where the urinary bladder is located. So we're gonna come back to this region here. We have to lift the leg up a little bit, Dr. Shalhoub, just so that we can get into that site. Again, separate the fur so you can see the skin. And then once you've got that vision there, we put, again, with the probe marker towards the head to start with. We'll start with our longitudinal and uh, image of the urinary bladder. So I'm just going to fan back and forth and see if we can pick up that urinary bladder at this um, pelvic region, the urinary bladder site. Now again, when we're doing this, think about patient position. If our patient was standing, I would come in straight on midline and pick up my urinary bladder. If my patient's in lateral, as we have with Penny here, then I want to think about where that pathology is going to accumulate and make sure I angle the probe down towards where that fluid accumulates, mm -hmm. just like we did at the umbilical site. So I'm gonna angle this down towards the body wall so that I pick up that gravity-dependent region in proximity and around that urinary bladder. 100% Dr. Boysen, so the binary questions we wanna ask here, again, is there free abdominal fluid here, yes or no? And there are some very sensitive sites to find this, one being the apex of the bladder. Yeah, so right now Penny's got a large bladder, so I'm just gonna fan all the way up one side at the apex, and I'll fan all the way off the other side of the apex. Again, making sure I do check that gravity-dependent region, but I do wanna fan all the way across the bladder. I don't wanna get stuck in only one plane and only angled down towards the tabletop because I might miss pathology that otherwise exists in the urinary bladder. There might be stones there or something else that I can pick up. So I do like to make sure that I fan all the way across the urinary bladder. The fluid accumulates at the apex. Then I will slide back and I'll check more in the trigone region like you're seeing here. And again, make sure I fan all the way up one side, fan all the way up the other side till the bladder disappears. Now I've done that in long axis. Is that a stone that I'm seeing there, Dr. Shalhoub, coming mm. right in the middle of the urinary bladder? Dr. Boysen, you stole my punch. I love explaining this. This is the colon and you have to be careful with the shadowing gas in the colon. It gives off the impression that it is a bladder stone, which is why it's important to fan that probe, Dr. Boysen, to show that it is actually a tubular structure under the bladder. All right, now once we've done that in long axis, Dr. Shalhoub, what do we want to do? You wanna go ahead and rotate the probe into short axis and you will do the same thing. You're gonna go ahead and fan and we're looking for free abdominal fluid, yes or no. All right, so we'll go all the way back to the trigone. We'll fan and sweep a little bit. This is a large bladder, so I can't just fan. I have to do a little bit of fanning and sweeping off the apex. There we go, no free fluid, no obvious abnormalities in the uh, bladder itself. Again, we see the colon there, no obvious stones. So that's short and long axis, Dr. Shalhoub. What else can we look for at this site? Well, there's a couple of other things, Dr. Boys, and you can actually look for pyometra here. So again, we're not gonna go into the details of this because she is a spayed female, so we won't be able to even see the uterus, but you can actually detect pyometra in dogs that are potentially affected by this condition. Absolutely, and we'll look distal to the urinary bladder, so it's gonna be dorsal that we're looking for that fluid-filled structure that is the uterus. So again, you'll have to watch some of the uh, lectures or podcasts mm -hmm. on how to identify that for pathology, but that's where we would look for it as well, exactly. And the last thing we look for, Dr. Shalhoub, over time? Well, you can actually measure bladder volume. Using the volume of a sphere, Dr. Boys, and that equation, if you go back to, what is it, like fifth year, sixth high school sometime, very long time for you, Dr. Boys. But yes, you can actually use that formula, Dr. Boys, and calculate the volume of a sphere, in other words, the urinary volume in millimeters. Absolutely, so we take the length in long axis and the depth in long axis like you see here. So to do that, we come in on midline and we uh, basically sweep through the bladder until it gets smaller, sweep till it gets bigger and then smaller, and then sweep back to the largest point. We'll get the length here and we'll get the depth here, Dr. Schlub in long axis. Then we'll turn it into short axis and we'll do the same exact thing then. In short axis, we pick up that urinary bladder, we sweep backwards until it actually starts to get smaller, forward till it gets bigger and then smaller, come back to the widest point, and when we get the widest point there, Dr. Shalhoub, we'll do the width and the depth in short axis, and then we take the length times the width times the average depth in the two different uh, views times 0 0.52. The old formula used to be 0 0.625, but there's some recent research to show that 0 0.52 is the better constant to use when doing this calculation. And that is essentially what we look for at that urinary bladder site. It sure is, Dr. Boysen.